terrible news. Fear Not Tarantulas is not coming to Daytona. Ah! <laughs>
friend, there's their card. And uh, I believe I've already given them a five star rating. These guys are excellent. They do a great job of packing and uh, they, they just do an excellent job. Everything comes in nice and neat and well packaged. All right, so it's all wrapped up nice and neat here. And a little bit of a cool pack there. This is different. I've never seen these. Boom. <laughs> and they're all wrapped up in this big ball of tape. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's exactly what I was expecting. Pardon me just a second, I need to get some tweezers. All right, so I'm back, I got my tweezers. Now, the Pisilotheria species that I got is Pisilotheria rufalata. Now, I've been wanting these, they're known as the red slate ornamental. Their colors are just beautiful. They have almost a neon green with some red coloring to them, and they are just gorgeous. Um, I consider pretty much all the Fisilotheria species to be gorgeous, but these are just absolutely stunning. So those were the ones that I wanted. And I ended up getting a Trinidad Chevron, which is a Salmopius Cambridgei. And uh, I really wanted another one of these because I've been looking for a male and I can't seem to find a male for her. But uh, for the one that I have, I have a very large female that's probably ready to breed. And uh, I'm hoping that I'll get a male out of this. Now, they mature pretty quickly, the males do. Um, they're actually a really fast growing species. Even my female grew relatively quickly. And I did get a um, freebie out of this if you spend over a certain amount. And this is a Cochiana Bru Brunipes, Bru Brunips. I'm not sure how to pronounce that. And uh, that is the dwarf leg, or the, I'm sorry, that is the dwarf pink leg. So the, the dwarf pink leg tarantula. And they're very cute species. They have nice pink legs and uh, almost a little heart shape on their butt, there on their abdomen there. So I'm um, looking forward to taking care of that. Okay, and real quick, I'm just gonna do a wellness check on everybody to make sure that everybody's okay and um, before I rehouse them into their enclosures. I like how they put this electrical tape around the edge there. Oh my goodness, that is probably the tiniest tarantula I think I've ever had. Oh, I wasn't expecting that at all fruit flies again. Wow. Okay, now the uh, Salmopius cambridgei. And I apologize if it's a little dark here. I don't have my usual light with me, so it's kind of hard to see. All right, and there that is. That one's pretty good size. And now we'll open up the Rufaladas. Save that.
Now they're packaged individually. They're sold as a communal. And um, I've been kind of researching how to keep the communals because they're a little bit different than most of your communal species. Um, I, I recently put out the uh, communal update on my Monocentropus balfouri and they're actually pretty easy. They get along well. You don't really have to worry about cannibalization or anything like that. But with the Pisilotheria species, you do. Um, and I know that people have kept them communally successful. In fact, I've seen breeders that have kept them communally that way. And one of the things that they mention, and I keep hearing this over and over, is that you can't give them too much space. So um, if you give them too much space, then they end up establishing territories. And then once you establish territories, then you end up having cannibalization. If one comes too close to their territory, there's a fight, somebody loses and gets eaten. So hopefully I will do well with these. I'm gonna try to keep them communally, but if I start having a lack of success, and that one looks pretty good and it looks pretty big, um, then I will probably separate them out and start keeping them individually. But I'm going to give it a shot and we'll see. Okay, number two. Another thing about keeping them communally, and, and this is one of those things that I'm not really too sure about, is that they have to be sack mates as well. So they have to be from the same sack. All right, and this guy, I don't see any movement. He's kind of crunched up in there. You all right? Yeah, he's all right. Okay, so we're good. Number two. So two rules to consider when you're keeping a communal Pisilotheria um, species is that they should be sack mates and that they should not have too much space that they could establish their own territories. Okay, here's number three. That one's also pretty good size. Doing all right. Another thing I really like about the um, Pisilotheria rufalata is that they are the largest species of Pisilotheria. That one's pretty good. And I believe the second largest is the Pisilotheria ornata. And this is number five. And number five looks pretty good as well. All right, so everybody's alive and kicking. The next thing I have to do is house them in their enclosures and we will be done. Okay, so I'm gonna set up my peak and bridge eye first. And uh, I found these cool little containers. They're hefty containers, but they're super clear. And they're made of nice acrylic, and then they have a locking rubber lid on the top. So I thought they were pretty nice, actually be able to see them instead of having them in those opaque containers that I used to keep my other um, Pisilotherias in. So um, yeah, I liked it because it's nice and clear, and I can actually see them. So let's go ahead and get him in there hopefully. This is one of those cases where I'm hoping for a male. And I got my catch cut ready just in case. There it is. Now 
the one that I have, I got as a juvenile, so I've never actually really seen them as a sling. They're very beautiful, got nice pink legs, and they've got a little bit of the chevron pattern on their abdomen already. So let's go ahead and get them in their enclosure, get him in his enclosure. There you go. And that was nice and easy. Pretty cool little guy. Okay, next up are the P. Rufilata. I hope I don't get any bolting. Uh, I do have my catch cut, but I've got a lot of space here on my counter, but uh, I don't want to have to be chasing them. All right, so here we go. That one's good size. Oh, and this one molted in the container. So, there it is. I don't know if I've got this zoomed in too far. There we go. Alright, so we actually had one molt in the container in shipping. Alright, little guy. Come on. There we go, there's your new home. Let's get you down. There you go. Alright, so we got that one in. Number two. Papers just falling apart. Mm -hmm. That spook there. That one jumped right in. Okay, they're both at the bottom. I've had people tell me that they're too small to actually bite you, that their fangs won't penetrate. I still can't help getting a little bit worried about them wandering on my hand. Um, it's just a reflex, you know, I haven't ever held uh, a um, old world species, at least not on purpose. So I, I am fearful of getting bitten. Especially when they bolt like that. <laughs> okay, here's number three. Okay, so this one is all balled up. Let's see if I can get this paper off. There we go. Paintbrush. Come on, little guy. There you go. All right, new home, number three. This is number four. There you go, 
no, 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 there's your new home. Come on. He wants to go the wrong way. You never do what you want him to do. Here we go. Come on. <laughs> it likes being on the paper. All right, you're underneath now. <laughs> and it comes right back up. Okay. How about we shorten the paper there? Oh, a little booger. Does not want to go. Okay. There we go. Now you have no choice. All right. Number four is in. Let's get you down so you don't climb up on the other one. Okay. And last but not least, number five. Oop, here I go again, spooked again. wandering around checking out their new enclosure now this is the first time I've ever I'm ever keeping a Pisilotheria species in a communal setting so wish me luck I'm gonna do everything I can to keep them communal but if I start seeing any signs of trouble or anything like that I will separate them but this is you know experimental we learn we try to keep them this way as long as I can and hopefully into maturity um, I do see people that keep a lot of them in a communal setting um, especially breeders I've seen several breeders that keep them that way um, usually from overseas I've seen people from like Indonesia that keep them that way so anyway I'm trying this out and uh, like I said wish me luck Okay, so the last one I have to rehouse is the Cochiana Brunipes, and um, I'm a little concerned about it because this is the smallest tarantula I think I've ever gotten. Um, I thought I had gotten the smallest tarantulas I'd ever gotten when I got my um, Aphenopelma hensis, and uh, these, <laughs> this little guy is about half the size of those. Um, so I do want you to appreciate the size of it, but I had originally set up a little pixie box that I get from Walmart. If you've seen my videos, you've seen the kind that I use for most of my slings. But I'm afraid the holes that I burned into it to, for ventilation are too big and it's going to get out. So what I've decided to do is I've, I've poked some holes in one of these vials that the, um, the P. rufaladas came in and I'm going to keep it in one of these vials until it gets a little bit more size and then switch it to a larger dram vial like this but it is that tiny and it is concerning to me because I do have to feed it fruit flies um, and uh, with my Aphenopelma hensis I got two of them I got them as freebies and um, when one of them ended up dying the other one is still doing well but I always get worried when I get tiny, tiny tarantulas like this because I feel like I, you know, I have to keep watching them until they get some size on them and until they start killing their own prey. Because when they're this tiny, um, sometimes they don't kill their own prey. Mama does it for them, so I gotta be mama for this little guy right here. So anyway, let me go ahead and get this one out so that you can see how tiny it is. And I, I know it's a dwarf species, but I was not expecting this at all. All right, I 
there it is right there can you see that that is one tiny little guy it's just a speck on the paper there and I'm gonna move closer to the light here so you can see it a little bit better there we go alright so this is very concerning for me because I do have to be very careful with this little guy they're delicate and feeding is going to be a chore oh there it goes such a tiny tiny little thing alright so got this one in this vial and it looks like it might be here for a little bit so I'm sure their growth rate is going to be somewhat slow so uh, it might be small for quite a little while which means I'm going to have to be dealing with fruit flies for quite a little bit alright and that's it so that's it for me today I hope you enjoyed it I want to give a big thank you to Fear Not Tarantulas they always do a wonderful job um, they have one of the highest reputations of any of the vendors out there for tarantulas and uh, their communication is always excellent um, very professional very very reliable so um, you don't have to worry about anything um, this was my first time ordering from them specifically for me um, I did have one order that a person ordered for me and I did buy from them at the last National Reptile Breeders Expo so this is the first time that I've actually officially ordered from them and uh, I was a little bit nervous because I usually have them sent to my house but this time I had it sent to a FedEx Center because it's hot as blazes here in Florida and they said if it's over 80 degrees then you should send it to uh, a FedEx Center um, it came to my local Walgreens so uh, yeah I, I didn't re realize that it was you know gonna be something like that and it was really easy to pick it up so anyway bang up job uh, I definitely recommend Fear Not Tarantulas if you're in the market for a tarantula uh, or many tarantulas uh, I definitely recommend them they have one of the biggest selections out there of any vendors um, they're always adding new stuff and they're always getting in rare stuff so it's it's really cool to always visit their site and see what new things they've brought in with their new shipments so definitely check them out um, that's it I hope you enjoyed it if you did please give me a like if you want to see more subscribe if you want to support this channel I do have a Redbubble store and I'll put the, the link in the description below any of the proceeds that come from the Redbubble store will go directly to support and grow this channel until next time keep loving them tarantulas